this is an lecture on special relativity and it's on Lorentz transformation so it's boosts and rotations and it's also on some stuff on drawing diagrams at the end as well right first definitions of a boost this is where you go from one frame to another so we go from t x y z to t hat x hat y hat z hat and we transform using this matrix here and this these three cases are all cases of boosts. So we have cosh, cinch, cinch, cosh, and some angle here. And this is telling us to boost in the x direction. And the way we can see that is if we just multiply this by this, we can see that the y and z are not going to change. So, and the only value that's going to change is t, which is the time will change anyway, uh, and x, as the x is going to change. So we can say this is a boost in the x direction. Uh, again, just over here, all you have to do is just multiply it a bit, and we can see that this is going to be a boost in, uh, well, the x stays the same, and so does the z. So it's going to boost, be a boost in the y, and surprise, surprise, the last one is going to be a boost in the z direction. Right, now we get on to rotations. Now, a rotation, this is just where you are turning the frame, really, uh, in any of the three frames. So, a rotation has to satisfy these. So, if you wanted to test if something's going to be a rotation, then you'd uh, get the matrix, which you've got here, transpose it, and times it by itself to get the identity. And that's saying that and that will be that it's a rotation and also it has to satisfy that the determinant of the matrix is equal to 1 which will be the case with all these hopefully um, this first one here this is well we can see if we multiply it again time's going to stay the same time should always really be the same uh, it, z is going to be the same so this is going to be a rotation around the z-axis, because the z-axis is going to say the same, so it's a rotation in the xy plane. Now this minus here, this is telling us to go anti-clockwise. Um, if there's a y up here, it means to rotate clockwise. And I did some tests on these. Uh, all, all you have to simply do is put in the, value, uh, the angle 90, and you'll get ones and zeros and that will just be much easier to work out and you'll be able to get this you'll, you'll see what it's, what's happened here if you put in the value say 1, 1, 1, 1 apply it with a 90 and see where everything goes and you should be able to work out if you do like a 3D diagram what happened down here if we multiply this we can see that uh, the x is going to stay the same so it's going to be rotation around the x-axis but this is going clockwise because we've got a negative up here and it's always uh, a square like this, well in these examples anyway cosine, sine, sine, cosine and this is the angle that you're rotating by over here again uh, y is the only one that stays the same so it's going to be rotation around the y-axis in the anti-clockwise direction and I think that's that, that for them now we get on to some more difficult they, they've uh, started defining uh, the different types of rotations and they call it uh, this, this particular one, which is proper orthochronous Lorentz transformations. Now, in order to find out if uh, a rotation is one of these, first we're going to use this uh, matrix Nabla, which may be different depending where you're doing this course. This is the one we've chosen to use, which is 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. I think also you can have minus 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, but what we do with this is we first have to check that the matrix transpose times this, times the matrix itself, is equal to the nabla. We also have to check that this is A00. This is saying the first item in the matrix. So we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3. That's how we're labeling the matrix. Um, so the first one has to be greater than or equal to, to 1. And this is, say, uh, this is when we're checking that it's orthochronous, which means that it goes with time, time stays the same, goes in the right direction and we have to check that the determinant of the matrix is equal to 1 which is saying that it's proper and I've forgotten what that was, was it? that it preserves the orientation 
that's what that means. And you can also have improper if this determinant is equal to minus 1, uh, which doesn't preserve the orientation. Uh, and it has to stick with that in order to be a proper orthochronous limit transformation. But it's improper if that's a negative one. Right. Now there's this cheat which our lecturer showed us. I've kind of put it into my own words. Uh, and this is to check this thing up here. Because if you've got a 4x4, four four, three 4x4 three four four matrices multiplying, that can take a hell of a long time to do. So what you can do instead is you have to check that the first column is time-like. So we've got S squared is greater than 0. Uh, and then we need that XA times XA is equal to 1. We have to find that down here, but I'll just read this line next. Then you have to check that the last three columns, uh, not with this matrix, just an example, the last three columns are space-like. So S squared is less than 0. And again we need the XA, XA, but this time is equal to minus 1. So it's 1 on the first and minus 1 on the last three. And we're labelling it like this. Uh, for each column we have C, T, X, Y, Z. And we label them as X0, X1, X2, X3 in the top. And for down the bottom, this is defined as X A subscript is equal to Nabla A V. So you've got the position like 1, 1 here, two, uh, no, 0, 0 here, 1, 1, 2, 2. All the rest really don't matter because the likes of Nabla 1, 2 will always be 0. Times X uh, superscript V. And this just translates, it depends on what your nabla is, but for me with this here, it's just the first one squared with the xa, uh, xa, the first one squared minus the second one squared, and th minus the third one squared, minus the fourth one squared, and that's what it translates as. But this will change depending on your nabla matrix. So I've got an example which I'm just going to talk through because I couldn't see how to write it down really, uh, other than lots of writing. So we want to find if this is a proper orthochronous Lorentz transformation. So we need to, well we've, we've got our three things we need to satisfy here. So if we check uh, this one first, this is an example from one of the homework sheets actually. So we check that first one, we can either multiply it out, but that will take a hell of a long time. So first we're going to check that the first one is time-like, so we're going to square this, uh, so that's going to be 4 over 2, which is 2, minus uh, 1 over that squared, minus a half, and then this squared minus a half again, which is 1, and in the same way we're also checking, because of our nabler, we're also checking the other case as well. We're also checking this at the same time. So that's one. Now we need to check it for the other ones that they're minus one. So these should all be negative one. So we'll have this one squared, which is zero, minus uh, one over root two squared minus a half. Then we have to minus a half again, which gives us minus one, so that's fine. This last one, we've got, uh, this will be a half, because of this here, so when you square it, uh, minus this squared, which will be a half, so that takes us to zero, and then we have to minus another half and another half, which gives us minus one, so that's fine. This last one here again, uh, this squared gives us a half, minus a half is zero, minus a half minus half is minus one, so that's fine, the first one is satisfied. Uh, next we need to check that the first value is greater than or equal to one, so we're saying that, that it's going forward in the right direction of time. So that's 2 over root 2 flat, uh, which is square root of 2, which is greater than 1, it's 1.4 1 something, so that's fine. Uh, and then the last one, determinant 1, I'm just you can work it out, but I'm just going to tell you that it, that it is equal to 1. So, because I've worked that out, out elsewhere. So it is a proper orthochronous Lorentz transformation. Now, this is a little bit extra, because I don't know how to put this into a video of its own, and this is just diagrams. So, it's a diagram when we have f moving relative to f hat with a velocity v. 
Now when drawing this, we just have to look at the V over C, so C is the speed of light. And if V over C is positive, then we always draw the F hat axis outside of the F axis. Uh, and if the absolute value is a lot less than 1, then the axes are close together. If it is close to 1, then they are trying to be as far apart as they can. But remember, we have to put them either inside or outside. So I think we've got a, we've got a few examples. We want to draw V over C positive, and V over C is a lot less than 1, uh, but the X and CT axis are at right angles. So we can draw the X and CT first have x across here and ct going up. This is positive, which means the f hat axis has to be outside the f. So if we've got our axis like this, we have to draw them outside. And it's a lot less than 1, so they're quite close to each other. So they'll be, if we, this is our ct axis, the ct hat would be quite, quite close. Like this, see they're both outside and they're quite close. Next one. We want to draw V over C negative this time, which means that the, uh, F hat is going to be inside and it's also close to 1. And we've got the same X and CT are at right angles. So we can draw the X and the CT. Uh, F hat will now be inside because it's negative and it's going to be close to 1. So it will be close to making a line, almost going at the X equals CT. Uh, line. Yes, and they're also close to they're this way around. So this one's closest to that one, that's still closest to that one. But they're trying to be as far away as they can. Not quite perfect, but they're trying to be quite far away. Uh, the last, I think this is the last one. We want to draw V over C positive, so it's positive, which means the F hat is going to be outside again. Uh, this is also a lot less than 1, which means it's going to be quite close. But this time we've got F X hat and CT hat axis are at right angles, so we can draw our X hat and our CT hat, but because it's positive, it has to be outside the F hat, the F axis, uh, the F frame, sorry. So that means the F ones are going to be inside the X hat and CT axis, and it's a lot less than 1 which means they're going to be quite close. So we'll have our x-axis, and our x-hat will be inside it quite close, and the ct will be up here, and the ct-hat will be inside, no, ct will be inside quite close. I might have got my hats mixed up a bit then, but as you can see, yes, the x and ct are fine because we've got the f-hat outside because it's positive, and they're quite close because it's a lot less than one. I hope that's been useful.